I'm Sylvia West. I'm one of your trainers on the Doggo app. And today we're going to be learning some fun DIY puzzle games that you can do at home while we're all trapped inside with our dogs going crazy. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is this fun new subscription that Doggo app has now called the Doggo Golden Subscription. And what it does is actually give you access to a private Slack channel with me if you click the link after the webinar today. So you'll get answers to your training questions from me personally within 24 hours. And we can also schedule weekly one-on-one -on -one calls together so that we can help you with all of your training needs. And in addition, you'll get full access to the Doggo app where you can un upload unlimited videos for exam evaluation. You'll learn hundreds literally there's hundreds of videos for tricks and training programs that are designed by dog experts so a little bit about me i'm a certified positive reinforcement trainer here in los angeles california so i currently work as the head trainer at a small boutique company called up dog la as well as a partner trainer for pet food express and several rescues around the city I love rescues. I have two. Um, when you get a chance, I'd love to see pictures of your dogs too. If I haven't already met them on the app, which I probably have. So today I want to talk to you guys about puzzles. First thing I want to kind of tick off is some puzzles that you can just buy. These are like activities that your dog can do that you can purchase and they're already done for you. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is one of my favorite products that I literally use these for my dogs. These are called licky mats. I don't know if you've seen these, but they're incredible. Um, they're still peanut butter on there. Gross. Uh, <laughs> so these actually entice your dog to do one of the most self-soothing activities that they can do, which is licking. So you can cover this in whatever you like. Peanut butter, cream cheese, cheese whiz. The world is your oyster. So long as it's smooth and creamy, um, you can put it on here and let your dogs lick. The different textures on this mat and this orange mat um, provide for a different experience, but the licking sensation for your dog is a natural self-soothing activity. So this just helps your dog be able to kind of settle and calm themselves down, which is super important, especially if you have a young dog at home. The ability to learn how to self-soothe is really important. It's kind of like sleep training a baby, right? And we have to learn how to comfort ourselves um, when we're all alone. So that's why I really like Licky Mats. You can also find links to the products I'm gonna talk about today um, in the description of this webinar as well. The other thing that I wanna talk to you guys about are puzzle toys that you can just buy that are already done. So my favorite toys are by uh, Nina Audison. Um, Outward Hound exclusively makes all of her toys, but these toys are designed to entice your dog psychologically. So this is an expert level puzzle. Um, so your dog literally has to like pull all of these things out and then twist it around. Um, my dog Hunter is just barely getting the hang out of this. Uh, he gets really frustrated and just kind of pops these off of there instead of actually doing the puzzle. So he's still learning, um, but I definitely recommend you check out the different levels all the way from beginner to, I think there's like a level three. So whatever you need for your dog, always start them at the lowest possible level so that they have the highest likelihood of winning. And that's going to be the next important thing that I want to talk to you about with any puzzle game that you want to do with your dogs, they have to win. If they don't win, they will hate the activity. And if they hate the activity, then, well, we've just defeated the whole purpose, right? Because we're doing these activities with our dogs to get their brains engaged, to get their minds working, and to wear them out. So if they're not having a good time, then they won't want to play. And if they don't want to play, well, then you're going to need to learn how to entertain them while trying to work from home. It's quite stressful. <laughs> so those are just some um, items that you can purchase that are kind of already done for you that you can use. The stuff that I want to talk to you about today is really cool stuff that you get to make at home. So if you're crafty, you could be extra crafty with these. If you're not crafty at all, you can still make these. It's all out of found objects that you probably have lying around and available in your house right now. And if you don't, you can improvise. So I'll give you several different options for the different games that we're gonna do that you can use. The other thing that I want to touch on, if you haven't had a chance yet, do check out my puzzle proficiency test. This test will give you an opportunity to check out what level puzzler you have at home, whether you're working with a shy beginner, 
a beginner, an intermediate, or an expert level puzzler. Those different levels will help to indicate to you how hard to make the game. Because again, it's all about setting your dog up for the win. And that's really positive reinforcement training in general. We always want our dogs to feel like they're winning. And the more they win and the bigger the paycheck, that reinforcement drives behavior. So if I'm constantly paying my dog for completing a puzzle successfully, they're going to want to complete more puzzles, yeah? So in the Doggo app, we also have a number of games available as well. So in addition to the ones I'm showing you today, you can find more of these videos on the Doggo app so you can do even more games with your dogs. Literally, the world is your oyster and puzzle games are so much fun. I have a blast playing these with my two pups. Um, I just have Hunter with me today and this is my dog, Hunter. He wants to say hello. Um, he doesn't, he was sleeping and now he's angry with me, but he's going to be happy in a second when he gets to eat all the snacks. So the first game that I want to talk to you guys about is a reveal game. Um, there's going to be a couple of different categories of games. There are cover games, reveal games, and spin games that we're going to be learning together today. The first game that we're going to learn is a reveal game. Now this game is probably equally as fun for you as it will be for your dog, because in order to play this game, you have to eat an entire box of cookies. You're welcome. I, I built this in because I know you're gonna wanna eat snacks and I know I'm eating like 18 meals a day right now and I don't know what's happening, but when you finish that box of cookies, you get to have a fun game with your dog. Yay! So it's mutually beneficial. Your dog finally gets the payoff for you eating all the snacks you're eating. So right now, um, all you're going to need is a box of cookies. Um, just make sure that whatever you end up using, uh, you clean very well. So um, these are the cookies that I ate. <laughs> and I'm now using the box for. The reason why I picked this box is because it, it does have a tray that pulls out. So you just need a cookie box that has a tray that pulls out. That's all you need. And if you don't have it, I'm giving you an excuse to buy more cookies. You're welcome. We're going to be best friends. Okay. So you get your box of cookies. You eat the cookies. Then you clean the tray. Okay, just make sure you clean it really thoroughly, especially if you're using a, a cookie that has any sort of chocolate. So like this is a chocolate peanut butter cookie. Um, it was mostly chocolatey crumbs, but whatever. I cleaned it really thoroughly and now I feel safe giving this to my dog. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is attach, I mean, this is DIY guys, so whatever you have, right? I don't have ribbon here. So I used my hair scrunchie and it works great. So all you need to do is cut a small hole inside of the plastic tray. Um, make sure that you also cut the flaps off of the box, okay, on one side, because we don't want those flaps to kind of get in the way or make the tray get stuck, because then they won't get it out and then they won't win. And as I've said over and over again, if they don't win, then right, we get it. Okay, so we get that tray poke a hole in it. I literally just, this is just two hair ties. Um, if you have a ribbon, you can make it look really nice and tie a little ribbon on there. Just make sure that it's long enough so that your dog has something substantial to be able to grab onto. Because the idea is obviously that they're going to be able to pull this drawer out and eat the cookies. Yes, their cookies, not, not your cookies the ones that you already ate. Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do is um, set our dog up for the highest level of success. So when we start the game, I can't start it like this, right? This is too hard and my dog isn't gonna understand how the game works yet. So always start with your highest probability of success. So I'm gonna literally start with this game like this, where the tray is pretty much out. I'm gonna move you guys to the floor with me and um, we can have Hunter demo this game. All right, here we go. Let's see. There he is. Hi, handsome guy. All right. Let's see if I can get him to wake up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. So, again, I'm going to start with the game pretty much open. Just stick, excuse me. Thank you. Stick the treat right in there and barely close it, making it easy for him to win. Yes, good job. Wow. And we'll just repeat that. And you can play along at home with your dog too. 
if you haven't eaten those cookies yet. Otherwise, get to work on eating some cookies, everybody. So put the treat in, barely close the drawer. They win, yes, big win. Now I can make it a little bit harder by putting the drawer a little bit further inside, right? So I can close it just a little bit more. Yes, so any slight movement of the drawer, he's already winning. Eventually, when my dog gets really good at this, you can start putting the cookies all the way in the back and closing the drawer all the way and letting your dog kind of figure out how to pull it all the way out, right? Good boy! Any motion that they make even to pulling the drawer out, any little iota that they show you of interest in trying to pull this out, mark them, pull the drawer out for them so that they can get the reward. That's how we play whenever we intro a game, right? We always want to set our dogs up for that big win. So even when you start to make the game more difficult and you do start putting those cookies in the last section of your drawer, if they even pull the drawer out a teeny tiny bit, I want you to just finish pulling it out for them so that they can get that win. The more times they win, the more likely they are to keep wanting to play. So you can slowly start to make this harder and harder and harder. Eventually your dog learns how to just pull this out all by themselves. And now you have a dog who knows how to do a reveal. Now, it doesn't have to stop here at the cookies. You can take this game and you can elevate it yeah, with different sized boxes. You can even take, um, like I have some old Amazon boxes or delivery boxes. And um, this is my little like game bucket that I use for Hunter. So if you can get this bucket to fit inside of a box, right, then they can pull that bucket out and take treats. Whatever you want to do, however you want to improvise it. I just recommend definitely starting with the cookie box because these are two very lightweight items, right? I know, Bethy, you ate all the cookies. So your dog's going to very easily be able to pull this out. So this is going to help them win, right? So eat some cookies, make a game. Yeah, sound like a plan? Great, all right. So that's the first DIY game that I wanted to share with you guys today. And again, that is categorized under our reveal games, right? Because your dog literally has to pull to reveal something, right? You can even play this game under your couch. Stick a treat on a towel, slide it under the couch, your dog slides the towel out, ta-da, right? He's like a little Houdini, magic puppy. So however you guys want to play this, you can play with it, elaborate on it, but this is really your prerequisite game. So this kind of helps foundationally set your dog up to understand how to reveal. Yeah, exactly. So the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about, obviously, is just gaming in general. So if you are not giving your dogs any sort of stimulation, which I know you all are because you're all Doggo app users. So I know you're training your dogs, right? They're learning new tricks, which is great. It's a great way to not only bond with your dog and create healthy relationships and communication together, but it's a great way to keep your dog motivated, stimulated, and quite frankly, young. I touched on it earlier, right? The brain is a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. Dementia is a real thing for dogs, right? So we can help them stave some of that off by just simply activating their brain and getting them to use that muscle. It is so, so important for your dog to be stimulated, to be thinking cognitively, and to be problem solving. With our domesticated dogs, they don't really have to solve problems anymore, right? They don't hunt. Um, they well, I mean, some of you might have hunting dogs, which is great, but for your average pet dog owner, right, they're not hunting, they're not seeking, they're not killing, and they're not dissecting. They're not hitting those four parts of their DNA that really make them dogs. So these games are just an easy way to kind of up that. And like I said, you can find more games like this on the Doggo app. We have hundreds of training tricks and programs designed by dog experts. And with the new Doggo Golden subscription, you do get access to that private Slack channel. You and I get to work together one-on-one. -on -one. I can answer your uh, training questions directly. You'll get an answer within 24 hours. So if you are learning new tricks and you're stuck on something, I'm here to help you out. We can even schedule one-on-one -on -one weekly calls together where we can go over maybe some of your more difficult stuff that you might be working through, right? Maybe your dog has some weird leash stuff going on right now. Who knows? But I'm here to help you as your personal certified specialist. So that's the new Doggo Golden subscription. So afterwards, you can check out the video link right here. It's also in the description.
The next game that I want to talk to you guys about is my favorite. This is my favorite, favorite game. Um, it's a cover board game. So we're literally going to be creating a board game for your dog. Eee. All right. So this is where taking that puzzle proficiency test will really help you out. So if you can grab that test and run it and figure out what level dog you have, this will just help you design this game better. So here's what you're going to need for your test. And I'll give everybody a sec if you want to get like pen and paper, and write down the ingredients for this fun DIY. Um, I'll go over slowly everything that you'll need to complete it. So depending on the level of your dog, if we're working with a beginner or a shy beginner, you're going to need literally some paper, just like paper that you can ball up. Um, let's see, I have a notebook here just so I can demo for you. Also, if you have a a dog that is ball crazy that absolutely is like oh tennis balls this game is for you because it will help teach your ball crazy dog how to leave balls that are rolling away alone and not chase after them it's kind of a dual purpose game which is why i really love it so if you have a beginner or a shy beginner you're literally just going to be using these kinds of balls right? Very simple, lightweight, right? The lighter it is, the easier it is for your dog to move, the more likely they are going to want to be to engage, especially if we're working with a shy beginner or beginner puzzler. So just to kind of break down the level of puzzlers, your shy beginners are dogs that are kind of fearful, where the idea of kind of pushing, um, even pushing a cup over, the sound of that plastic cup toppling is terrifying to them. That's a dog that I would classify as a shy beginner, right? So we need to go kind of slow with them. So the idea that they might take an actual tennis ball and move it, that's a little too heavy and a little too intense, but they sure can probably move a piece of paper or even a tissue. Work at your dog's pace, help them win. If they win, then they'll get more confident. And that's one of the key things about playing these games with your dogs. If you do have a shy dog at home, play games with them. You're going to build their confidence. They're going to learn how to explore and discover on their own because you really can't help them win this, right? And every time they do win, they're getting instant paycheck because all they have to do is move the paper away and there's food there. So they're getting paid instantly and they're really learning how to confidently use their muzzle and their paws to achieve great things. So if you do have a shy dog at home, don't shy away from puzzles, just use softer things. All right, so you'll need some paper if you have a shy dog. You'll need some of your dog's favorite toys, just a few or as many as you want. And then you'll also need uh, dun, dun. Oh, cupcake tin. Yeah, if you're a baker, you have one of these. If you're like me and you thought you were going to be a baker and then you were like, just kidding, I don't bake, I play with dogs, then you have one of these too, right? So all you need is a cupcake tin. Now, if you don't have a cupcake cupcake tin and have never had aspirations of becoming a baker, baker and buying a cupcake tin, then you may have a um, gardening pot, like a starter kit, yeah? Um, Oh, great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So he he tell, magically disappears the treats. Yeah, sometimes Hunter really gets those I, I, under the couch somewhere and they're never to be seen again. Um, so yes, cupcake tin. If you don't have that, then you can use um, like a pot starter. So if you are a gardener and you have those little like pot starter kits, that works too. And if you don't have any of that, you know, what also works really well is just a box and you can put like a wine divider. So, you know, if you, uh, well, I don't know if, well, maybe now everyone's buying cases of wine, but you have, they have those like little dividers. You can just stick that in a box and have little dividers. All you need is something that has sections in it. Okay. Um, so what you need is this, some toys or paper. Yeah. Paper ball fits in there. And then Tennis balls. Yay. That's all you need. And what we're literally going to do is create a board game for our dog. Now, how we advance this and make it harder or easier is in the beginning, you want to have less items on the board and more treats. Okay. I'll repeat that. So less items on the board, more treats. So in the beginning, I might just have like um, three tennis balls and one toy, right? But I'll have a treat in every hole. 
okay? And then slowly you can start to kind of cover this up until eventually you have a full board of games. Ta-da! So also when you first start to fill up your board, make sure that there is a treat available under each one of these, right? Because we want your dog to get paid every time they move an item. As your dog starts to advance, so if your dog is already testing an intermediate, your board should look like this. You'll just have treats under every single one. As your dog starts to get more expert, maybe you'll only hide one to three treats under this tray of 12. Yeah, so it's up to them to use their nose to figure out where the treat is hidden. Now, for all my pet parents out there who have tennis ball lovers, why this game works so well for you is because now your dog's going to move this ball, it's going to start rolling away, and they have a choice to chase the ball like they always do. You know when you play fetch and they bring you the ball and they drop it and you go to grab it and it rolls and they pick it up again and you're like, no, right? And you're like, how do I make them leave it alone? This helps with that because now this ball is going to roll away and they have a choice. Go chase the ball or eat the treat they just discovered, right? So now they're getting an instant paycheck for leaving this rolling ball away alone and they're getting used to the picture of seeing your hand grabbing this ball and they're getting paid for it instantly. So if you do have a tennis ball lover, just fill this thing up with tennis balls and um, let your dogs go at it. So I'll demo really quickly so you can watch Hunter play around so you can see how it works and then yeah have fun with this. I mean toys, balls, I have a mixture of everything on here and just remember for our shy beginners, lighter weight items like paper and tissue paper help your dog succeed, win, and then you can move on to like stuffed animals. Still very lightweight, easy to move off the board, and then they get to have that one. All right, so I'll bring you back on the floor with me. Let's see. All right, here we go. All right, Bubba's. I know, there's nothing in there right now. He's like, what do you want me to do with this? So I'll just... Fill it up right in front of his face. Laziest puppy. He's literally going to play from this laying down position. Um, you can also help your dog by holding on to the board game. Because as they do start to move it around, especially for my shy dogs, if they move this and it makes like a scraping sound on the floor, it will actually scare them. And then they'll have an aversion. So anytime we're playing a game, just remember, you don't want your dog to have an aversion to whatever it is that you're doing. So help them win. Help them have a good time. Good boy. And then what I do to help Hunter out is I just take away the toys that he's already revealed. So if he's already eaten the treat out of it, then I'm going to take the toy away. Good job. Good boy, get it. Good boy. Make sure you encourage lots of positive reinforcement. Good job, buddy. Wow, what a good boy. That's so impressive. I know. I know you're doing a great job. Good boy, get it. Yes. Oh, wow. Right. Especially with the tennis balls, because sometimes they plop into another one and then he's just taking the same ball off a bunch of times. So that's not very fair. Good job, buddy. I think you found them all. Yes. All right. So that is how you create a cover board game. And again, you can make that board out of anything you like, so long as there's little sections where you can hide treats and cover them with really whatever you want. I mean, you could even use like a measuring cup if you wanted to. Um, just anything lightweight that they can kind of pick up and move. And what I really love about this kind of cover game is if you vary the kind of items that are on the board, you'll notice Hunter used a variety of things from his mouth to his paws right? And that's what we want. We want them to be muzzling and pawing at the items because that's just going to increase their likelihood of curiosity and tenacity. So when we're talking about building confidence, that's what I'm looking for, right? It's just a very confident dog who's like, I'll use whatever it takes. Give me cookies. And that's what we're looking to build in. Okay, great. So one more game left um, that I wanted to share with you guys today. And again, these are not all the games that Doggo offers. You can head to the app and find even more fun things that you can do. I think in the preview video, there was like a toilet paper game. Um, I mean, really, you can make games for your dogs out of anything. Um, okay, so the next game that I wanna show you guys is what we're gonna call a spin to win game. 
literally is exactly what it sounds. Your dog needs to spin an item in order to reveal the cookies and to win. So for this game, you'll need a bottle. This is where like, if you're a handy person, this is, you kind of need to be a little handy for this one. Um, or if you have a significant other who's handy, then they can do it for you. Um, but I think we're all pretty capable of handling this ourselves. So this is our spin to win game. Here's what you will need. Any kind of bottle. This is legit DIY, you guys, okay? Um, I didn't even try to make this look pretty, I'm sorry. But if you are in quarantine like right now, like we are, all of us, then you might have a lot of extra bottled water, right? Water bottles lying around, um, plastic soda bottles. Um, this is just an old Super B complex vitamin bottle, right? Whatever you have, just a bottle of any kind will work. And what you'll do is drill a hole through the bottle, right? All the way through to the other side. That's all you need to do. And the next thing you'll need is some sort of like dowel or you can use a bamboo stick. Um, you can even use a string if you're desperate and you can't get a hold of a dowel of any kind. And all we're going to do is string up our bottle like so. Now here's the fun thing about this game. We start with one bottle. You can use as many as you like. You can even do small cups with handles. So long as they're plastic and they spin easily, that's all we're looking to do, right? Spin to win, that's it. So to start out, again, always setting your dog up for success. If your dog spins this even a little bit and does not get paid, guess what? They're not gonna wanna spin it anymore. So to start out, we wanna set our dogs up for our highest level of success. In the beginning, what I'm going to do, even with Hunter, is I'm going to hold the bottle so that it's horizontal. So bring your fingers in nice and close so you can kind of put a lock on this. And then if he touches the bottle at all, gets it to spin even a little bit, just use your own fingers to manipulate and tilt this bottle so that the food reward will fall out. I need your dog to get paid instantly for any attempt to spin this bottle. Because when you're not helping them, it's gonna be pretty hard. The treats will get kind of stuck on the stick and it's gonna be more difficult than it starts out being. But if they don't get to win right away, they'll be like, oh, that thing doesn't work, it's broken. You need to find me something else that I can play with, okay? So make sure that your dog can win. So always set them up, start like this, right? So they can see right in there, they can smell right in there. Any attempt to move it, boom, they win. Hooray, good job, whoa! And then eventually they'll start spinning. So I will demo with Hunter one more time. Let's see if I can get his lazy butt to get off the bed this time. Wouldn't that be something? All right, you ready, Papa? Oh, wow, what's this? He went and got his bone. Uh, apparently I wasn't moving fast enough. So for this game, I'm actually going to just use his uh, his kibble because it's harder and it's gonna fall out of the ball more easily. So you can start with anywhere from one to two cookies in there. All right, and again, I'm just gonna set this up. Let's see. So starting horizontal, right? Yes! Wow, good boy! So I'm literally stopping it so that he can have that win, right? We'll do that again. Wow, good boy! I'm literally just handing this to him. But that's what I need to do right now so that eventually he'll do it on his own, right? Good job, bud! Yes! Oh, I know! Here, your other one fell over there. Oh, wow, there it is. All right, and then you can do as many treats as you want and hold it further apart, always stabilizing. Now, when you start to get creative with this game, and let's say you've got like three or four of these on here, you can set this up somehow. If you're using a string, tie it to a piece of furniture on one end or your banister, and you can hold the other end of the string, and you can have three or four bottles on this bar that your dog can spin to win. You can set up their whole breakfast or dinner just on this one game, right? And in order for them to eat, they have to spin three or four bottles and jars or any assortment of things that you've put together for your spin to win game um, in order to have a fruitful 
an exciting breakfast. While we've been in quarantine, my dogs have literally not eaten, eaten out of a bowl the entire time. Um, it's just a waste to be perfectly honest with you. Yes, I know. Cause I really need them to be stimulated during this time, especially being that my husband and I are both home all the time. They're very confused. They're like, I don't know, are you guys going to go to work? What's happening? Um, and they tend to kind of rely on us to entertain them more because hi, hello, we're here. So if you can give your dog an activity to do, so in the beginning, I showed you a couple of activities that you could do on your own. Um, there's also a link to like some Kong toys. You can get a, a wobbler or a bob -a lot which is like a, they tip it back and forth and treats fall out. That's how I've been feeding my dogs. I have a big spin to win game that I set up using just an Amazon box. And I take that dowel and I stick it through the box and um, he just spins and that's his whole breakfast is he just spins for breakfast. It takes him probably half an hour to eat. But in that half an hour, he's wearing himself out, which most people don't know this, but brain teasers and stimulation are more exhausting for your dog than any amount of physical exercise. I always try to remind my private clients, your dogs by nature are athletes. So there's never going to be a day where you can outrun your dog. It's just not going to happen, right? They're naturally much more agile than you are. Hunter is a small guy. He weighs 11 pounds. And when I first got him and he was a puppy, we would run six miles together. And we'd come home and he'd still be ready to play fetch. So I can tell you from experience and as a dog trainer professional, your dog needs mental stimulation to have a tired dog. And a tired dog is a good dog.